Welcome, welcome, welcome to the SAS VIA Release Highlight Show. I'm your host, Anna Brown, and today we will talk about SAS VIA Release Highlights from version 2021.2.3, and we'll give you four fresh ways to, de to develop your models on SAS VIA. We'll talk about things like GANs for synthetic data generation and reinforcement learning in SAS visual data mining and machine learning. We'll take a look at some interactive modeling and collaboration capabilities in SAS visual forecasting. Then our guest today is SAS product manager, Sophia Rowland, and she'll tell us all about what's new with SAS model manager. We're talking about containerized SAS models on the Google Cloud platform. Super cool stuff. Before we get to it, a few reminders. First, today is the last day to register for the SAS hackathon. Listen, if you're watching the show, you're interested in SAS VIA, and the best way to get your hands on SAS VIA at no cost is to join the hackathon. You have access to SAS VIA Azure Cloud, and you can team up with SAS mentors and other industry leaders to solve a real world problem for an unmet need. It's really exciting, and you should register today because it's the last day for it. Check it out at sas.com slash hackathon. As you watch the show today and you have thoughts and ideas and questions, we want to hear from you. We're all a part of this conversation. So drop your thoughts in the chat and we can't wait to hear uh, what's going through your head. Let me kick us off. I'd like to know if you're currently deploying models on containers. And if so, what's your biggest challenge with it? Can't wait to hear what you think. Okay, it's the moment we've all been waiting for. Let's face it. I introduce the rundown. We now support using GANs, Generative Adversarial Networks, for synthetic data generation with tabular data. Now, this adds to our existing support for image data. So now when you need to expand your data sets or perhaps increase the representation of a certain segment or group in your data, you can now do that with this utility that intelligently generates observations based on existing variable distributions and also preserves correlations among variables. In reinforcement learning, we've added support for images to represent the state of an environment as opposed to just discrete attributes, which is important not only for teaching a machine to win at video games, but also for many real world problems like self-driving cars that use images from video to understand and react to their surroundings. With this release, we are continuing to build out the interactive modeling capabilities within visual forecasting. In this release, we add the capabilities to create custom non-subset Aramax models and the ability to copy and edit non-subset Aramax models within the interactive modeling node. The copy and edit capability applies to either a system generated or previously created custom non-subset Aramax model. On the series analysis tab, autocorrelation plots, the autocorrelation function, the partial autocorrelation function, and the inverse autocorrelation on both the normalized and standardized scales are now available to help determine how best to structure custom Aramax model components. These plots help determine appropriate values for both standard these are the lowercase p, d, and q values and seasonal uppercase p, d, and q values uh, for autoregressive moving average and differencing options. I'm also going to highlight a new usability enhancement within Model Studio. An enhancement has been made to the project collaboration and sharing capabilities. In last month's release, you were able to see all other users who are in the project, their level of access, read or write access, and the name of their active tab. Now you were shown the name of the specific pipeline they are on, as well as the node, if they have some aspect of that node opened, such as the forecast viewer or in the interactive modeling node. This model studio capability is available in visual, visual forecasting, visual data mining, machine learning, and visual text analytics. Great updates, Brett and Joe. Thank you for sharing those cool features. Now, if you want to dig down deeper on a couple of those, um, synthetic data generation and reinforcement learning, there's some great tutorials right here on the SAS Users YouTube channel to check out. 
Now we get to talk about one product in particular and one feature update. That product this month is SaaS Model Manager. I introduce the release talk. I'm joined by SaaS product manager, Sophia Roland. Welcome to the show, Sophia. Hi, Anna. Thanks for having me today. Of course. What are you going to show us? Today, I want to talk about publishing SaaS container runtime to the Google Cloud Platform. The SaaS container runtime, also known as SCR or sometimes as Soccer, allows model ops engineers to push their SaaS models into a container. A container is great because it is the complete software package, meaning it holds the model and what's necessary to execute the model. There are many benefits to using a container. A container is lightweight, meaning it has a small footprint. And if you're in the cloud, this can help you save on cloud costs. If your model is receiving high traffic during certain hours, you can scale up to meet that traffic and scale back down to save on costs. Containers are immutable, meaning that they can't be changed. If you want to replace a container that's in production, you can configure it so that change takes place without any service interruption. But because the container is immutable, that means you have an executable version of your model that's saved and available for future auditing purposes. And finally, containers have flexible deployment options, meaning that you can leverage your OCI compliant environments today with the SAS container runtime. Now, we already push SaaS container runtime into private Docker registries, as well as registries on Azure and AWS. And as of this past release, we can now add GCP to that list. Wow. That, thank you for all that context and um, defining containers. It certainly helped me. Let's see the demo. And here we are inside the model managers project page. I have this project that we've created for today's show. I can click into it and I'll see all of the different models that my team has put together. A few that have come from our model pipelining interface as well as from our Python programmers interfaces as well. Now that I've done all of the validation on these models, they are ready to be published into a container. To publish into a container, I simply click the model that I am interested in publishing, here my model champion, and I select publish. I have a wide variety of destinations that have been pre-configured for me in this environment, including container des destinations across Azure, as well as GCP, and we do have the option to publish a container to AWS as well. So I'm going to select the one that was created just for me, and then I will come in and name this container, and select Publish. Wonderful. My Container has been published into my container registry on GCP under this release example GCP name. There are a few ways that I can validate that my container has made it into the correct destination. I can start by performing a validation test. So I can come here into my scoring tab, select publishing validation, and I can start to see the example validation that was pushed here. So I'm going to click into it, select an input testing table. Here's the one that I'm interested in. Select OK. So Sophia, is this the data that you're running it up against? Is that what we're looking at? Yeah, so this is the data that's going to be fed into my container and okay. then we're going to validate that my container is scoring as expected. All right, and then we select run. Wonderful, we have our results returned from our container within our GCP container registry, which I can view by clicking our results tab here. And now I can see how my model within my container has scored my input data set. Now, 
Let's also just take a peek within our GCP container registry to see our container living there. Here I am within my Google Cloud Platform container registry, and you can see that my team has been very active pushing containers. Let's find the one that I'm most interested in. And here is our container that we just pushed living in our container registry. From here, our DevOps team can pick up this container and start to use it in their production pipelines. And that's what I had brought to show you guys today. Excellent. Thank you for sharing that demo with us um, and walking through that process. Now, on the starting page, that project interface, you mentioned that you arrived there after doing some modeling in the SAS model pipeline interface and even the Python model programming interface. Can you talk a little bit about what that flow looks like? Is it pretty straightforward to get to that point? It is, and I'm so glad you picked up on that, Anna. We want to make the model registry process easy for our data scientists, and that often means meeting them where they are modeling. We've aimed to make our registration process fit into how they're doing the, their current modeling process best. From Model Studio, on our model pipelining tool on SASVIA, users can push their models into a model repository for just a few button clicks in the user interface. For our Python users, we have an open source package called SASETL, which they can leverage to register their models and modeling assets from their Python IDE, notebook, Python program, however they're building their models today. Our Python pro programmers don't need to download or re-upload. They just add an additional block into their Python code and they can leverage that capability. Excellent, thanks for laying that out. I'm sure that's nice for our Python developers to hear. Now, are there plans to expand on this SAS container runtime support for other cloud providers? Well, that is the beauty of using containers. Containers can be moved easily. So even if there isn't a publishing destination defined within Model Manager today for a specific cloud, users can still push their container into their Docker, AWS, GCP, and Azure registries, and from there, push it into their cloud of choice. The SAS container runtime will run on any open container initiative or OCI compliance system. But that being said, do let me know in the chat if there's another destination that you would like Model Manager to push that container directly to. All right, you heard it, everyone. Put your uh, cloud uh, cloud wish list in the chat, and we would um, really enjoy your feedback and hopefully incorporate it into the the process. So talking about the process and the roadmap, what's in the works for SAS model manager? What can we expect? There is a lot of great stuff in the works for model manager. First and foremost, our model manager team has been hard at work improving the performance of model manager. This means a faster processing speeds and a more responsive interface. We are continuing to strengthen our support with open source. Just this month, we released our initial integration with MLflow and with our open source package SASCTL with plans to continue this work. We're also adding additional support to the SAS container runtime so that it can better fit into existing DevOps processes. This includes database support, stronger support for Python, and Kafka support as well. We're increasing governance through better integrations with Model Risk Manager and a wider range of options for performance monitoring. But of course, let me hear, what is your model management wish list? Add, some, add it to the chat. Love that. Okay, well, this was certainly interesting to learn about the container runtime. And fun fact that Chris Emmeninger added to the YouTube chat was that the recommendation engine on SaaS support communities actually uses a, a SaaS model that's deployed in containers. So um, just a you know, little factoid there for our viewers and also our community members. Thank you so much for your time today. Sophia, we can't wait to hear what's to come. Thanks for having me, Anna. Sure. Well, that just gave you a hint of what is new with SAS VIA, release 2021.2.3. Be sure to check out the links below for more resources, including a link to the SAS support communities. There's a dedicated community to SAS VIA release updates. 
you can subscribe to get month by month updates on what is new. And of course, check us out next March. We'll have this show to, to check in with you and give you the latest and greatest. The best way to find out when that show will be is to subscribe to the SaaS Users YouTube channel. Until then, thank you. Bye.